Rock Eyes would like to welcome Chris Bickley. Hey, man, what's up? What's going on? Hey, how you doing, Brian? Thank you for having me on. No Great problem. To talk to you again. Yeah, we're a longtime friend, so uh, anything for a friend. You know, but let's let's go back and start at 2012 with uh, Tapestry of the Souls. Um, you have a lot of friends of mine on there, personal friends like uh, McCarvel, uh, Zampa, and uh, my uh, very close friend uh, Chandler Mogul. Um, tell me a little bit about the making of that CD, and uh, you know, how'd you get everybody aboard? Well, that's an interesting uh, question. It started out uh, the record started out as a couple tracks, just. Uh, you know, I had just got my home studio going, and um, I started uh, laying down some things and just, you know, testing out the room that I had, and uh, and that kind of evolved into, hey, uh, would you like to play some drums on this? And kind of from there, uh, I kind of just snowballed a bit. But the backstory to that is that I, I've known DJ for years, and I've known McCarvel for years uh, since I moved to Connecticut back in 2001, um, and they're kind of uh, friends of friends, um, and pretty much what ended up happening on the album was, Everybody that was involved, including Chandler, because I had met Chandler um, on Facebook um, right. when Facebook first got started, and uh, Chandler uh, was, uh, you know, cutting his teeth on some tracks too. And um, I told him then I wanted to do something with him someday. And uh, basically, I ended up asking all of my friends uh, if they would like to be involved on a track or something, and, and you know, try to do this thing. It turned into like a couple songs, turned into a full album. Right. Um, and basically, it was just a big party with me and all my friends. I mean, cool. it's really kind of what happened, yeah, you know. And uh, we got Mike involved, you know, Mike DeSera, we, uh-huh. you know, and Mike's, of course, worked with McCarvel Obsession and DJ as well. And, uh, and, and, and pretty much, like I said, everybody on the album is really kind of a friend of mine right. that I've known one way or the other through association, through other bands and stuff like that. That you know, the last however many years I've been here, right. <laughs> so. Cool. Uh, and, that's kind of how that happened, and where and where I where uh, where they kind of came into play. I had that. I, I wanted to put everybody into a little bit different setting than 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 what they were used to playing. Right. They want everybody to be exactly comfortable with what they're doing. That's kind of what 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 we did with that too. We kind of shook it up a little bit. Chandler got to see something a little different that he doesn't normally get to sing, which cool. I thought was great, and and he had a lot of bl- a lot of fun doing that too. So. Cool, cool, cool. Now let's get to uh, digital reflection. Uh, that which came out in uh, 2017, which uh, was just last year. Um, tell me a little bit about that album. Well, that record is uh, well, well, I'll to the first. One. And, uh, we I wanted to do something uh, this uh, like we all try to evolve, so I wanted to do something different with this one. Um, and that was you know learning from some of the mistakes I had made on the first album, whether it was engineering or uh, you know just. Uh, uh, songwriting, or however you you know you can kind of look at it, with a lot of little nuances that I wanted to kind of dial in. So this time uh, I took a different approach, um, and of course that was kind of a uh, also a follow follow up from me. I was kind of down for about two, two years in surgery, so right. but uh, that was kind of like a, a kickback for me. I had to kind of get my myself in gear there for this one, and uh, I, I consolidated the players. Um, limited it to, you know, a handful, of, I say a handful, like six players. Um, and I had a lot of material that was kind of accumulating because I, I, I was uh, sidelined for a little while. And um, we had uh, we only had two vocalists on this record this time. And I, I wanted to try it uh, with a more uh, upfront kind of recording as opposed to a room sound. We, with the first record we did a little more raw. This time I wanted to do modern sounding. And uh, I also, again, invited... Uh, some repeat, some of my friends, uh, most of them actually are my friends. Uh, and Jimmy, Jimmy Pitts actually became my friend during the course of the the, uh, the five years of, between uh, reflection and uh, visual reflection and tap your soul. So Jimmy got invited on as well and uh, got to uh, got to be a part of that as well. So uh, it was nice that Jimmy Pitts uh, put his little touch on that. So. Cool. Now, uh, now let's get to uh, Enomia. Um, which is a little bit, uh, you know, a distance from uh, those two releases, uh, more symphonic metal, uh, which I'm finally glad, you know, United States can look to somebody instead of always looking to the Europeans for uh, symphonic metal. And, um, you know, for me, um, you know, this is like a premiered release for me because, I mean, the opening track, Cleansing, um, you know, is amazing. You know, it's simply amazing. Um, t- 
tell me a little bit about the band members, you know, how'd you work on the album, everything you can tell me, tell me. Uh, well, it all started in 1885. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, it's kind of an interesting uh, build-up, I should say. I mean, uh, as I mentioned earlier, Jimmy and I got started together working on, uh, halfway through Digital Reflection, we started working on some stuff, and... Um, you know, he was always a, a, a amazing uh, instrumentalist and keyboardist, and um, so when I I met up with actually Phyllis uh, in 2015, midpoint 2015, right, and we we started talking, you know, and she she had some songs and that she had written with a, with a with a co writer, uh, guitar player, um, and uh, 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 he's gonna kill me if I mispronounce his last name. But his name is Rich uh, La- Lash. Oh my God! I'm sorry, Rich. Rich Lash. <laughs> I'm sorry, buddy. Uh, you're gonna kill me, bro. I talk to him all the time. He's a great guy. Uh-huh. But she had some songs that she co-wrote with him. Uh, she had about five or six songs that they co-wrote when they started right. out, and they were having problems getting things going. And uh, I was just finishing up Digital Reflection, and she and I started talking about doing some songwriting together. And she presented the so- songs that she had in, in, in demo format. So from there, um, I told her that I said uh, I would like to be you know involved in this, and I would like to uh, do a little more than than uh, just be the guitar player. I'd, I'd like to have a vol- uh, involvement in production and some engineering and songwriting, and uh, taking a little step further than than what I've been doing with my own stuff. And uh, what you know, like I did. Well, actually, I did it on my last record too, so I can't say that, but. Um, so, uh, when she agreed to, to, to get something going and I promised her that I, I would help her complete the project and I call it project the band per se, right. I said that I would bring in, bring in my guys. And so I chose, um, Gaetano Nicolosi, who was, um, the drummer for uh, Ron Keel's Iron Horse for uh-huh. many years. And uh, I met Ron, uh, many, many years ago in, in South Carolina. My band actually opened for Iron Horse and that's kind of how I met Gaetano right. back in like, you know, 98. 99, somewhere back in there. And uh, we've always been friends since then, and uh, I shared the material and told him what I was going to do with it and what I wanted to do, and he, he liked the material, and he was more than happy to be a part of it, so I was really glad he got came in because he's such a great pocket drummer, and uh, you know he's been all over the world. Uh, you know He's from Italy, so he, you know, he right. trained over there and stuff like that. So same thing with Jimmy. Uh, I, I presented the material to Jimmy, showed him what we had, um, you know, and he, he listened to the tracks, and I said, listen, this is going to be a band. It's not going to be, uh, you know, just a recording project. It's really going to be a band, and that's what it is. Right. Um, and he was thrilled to be a part of it, because normally, you know, like Jimmy and myself, a lot of times we get thrown into these instrumental shredder kind of things, and, right. you know, a lot of, we don't get the opportunities always to, to, to play songs, you know, especially, you know, good songs. And that was something that Jimmy was really happy about. We had some really good melodies and some really good songs to work with. And uh, so he got to be featured on some stuff, and that's how we brought him in. And uh, and then we have, of course, Mike Lapon, uh-huh. um, the uh, Jersey native. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, everybody knows Mike from uh, Symphony X. And uh, so Phillips actually has known Mike for a couple years. And um, she said, what do you think about getting Mike playing on it? And I said, okay. You know, I, obviously, I wasn't going to object. Mike's an awesome player, and he's a great guy. And I had not, actually never met him in person um, and, uh, he talked, she talked to Mike and Mike was, she was down for the county where he liked the stuff and he wanted to be a part of it. So we said, okay. And, uh, we kind of, kind of secured a lot of, very quickly. Um, you know, and, uh, the chemistry was there. So when I started laying down the guitar parts and getting the structures down and, uh, I was kind of, uh, going over some of that with her here and then I did some editing on some of the demos that we had and I used to make the songs a little, a little, uh, a little more uh, uh, friendly to the ears, if you will. Right, yeah. And, uh, yeah, so I nailed the drums off, I should say, nailed the tracks off to the drummer, and then we kind of did it through the Internet, kind of like the usual way that people do things. But uh, a lot of, uh, you know, back and forth through emails as far as production and stuff, like, hey, man, you know, like, uh, lay back on this part, right. anticipate this part, and so on and so forth. So there were some punch-ins and some working that had to be done through the Internet as far as that goes. Um, and, uh, you know, I ended up writing three songs with Phyllis, um, to round out the record, and we did a ballad, and I added a couple of other tracks to the record. Right. Uh, one of the songs was a song that I had already written, um, and I was actually waiting for uh, the right uh, situation to to insert the song, and that was actually the song that ended up being "Till We Meet Again." Mm-hmm. Um, 
And uh, it was kind of a direction I wanted to go in a long time ago anyway. And uh, it just so happens that those kind of bumped into me, if you will, on the Internet. And it worked out that where that song really had found a home and it was really good for her. So, um, And that's where that song came from. And uh, that's kind of how we got the band going. We, we did everything through the Internet. And uh, we mixed and mastered with... Uh, uh, Robert Romagna over in uh, Austria, right. and uh, he was part of uh, Pure Steel's uh, lineup as far as uh, their engineering and mastering. Uh, and uh, he's amazing. He uh, really, uh, he really is an amazing individual. Uh, his work is top notch, and that's pretty much how that kind of got going. Cool, cool. Now, now the opening song, which I might have said cleansing, it's cleaning. Um, it's cleansing. No, you're right. <laughs> I, I had to correct myself. That I was waiting. You know, it's cleaning, which is my favorite track. Uh, how'd that come to light? That song. I mean, it's so diverse, and you know, it's uh, really good. I love it. You know. Well, that was that was one of the ones that that one of the ones that was in demo form. Uh-huh. Um, and so structurally, you know, the song was kind of intact when I got it. Um, I did change some parts uh, that I thought needed to be changed. Not much, but a little bit. Here and there, uh, again, some editing. Uh, actually, I took I took some parts out. Uh-huh. Believe it or not, it actually has less stuff on it than it did when I, when I first got it. Um, and uh, you know, like even the intro part of that uh, wasn't really there until we got the the, the basics of the song kind of down, and we added that kind of uh, industrial drum groove in there in the beginning. And um, so that that song was kind of already put together when I got a hold of it. But uh, I did have to you know put some Bickleyism over all over the track to, to make it to make it to, uh, to make it my own too you know because right. you know if I was going to be be neck deep in it I wanted to make sure that it had you know some roots uh, as far as what you know what I was what I was doing and where I was at you know, listening to it so uh, that's one of my one of my personal favorites on the record I have, I have a hand I say a hand I have like two or three that one's one of my favorites right was it tough uh, you know putting uh, uh, the tracks in order uh, for uh, track listing um no that that for some reason we were very lucky um, that those songs when we when we sat down it was almost like we just we rolled the dice and it just kind of it all fell in place very quickly. Right. Um, it was not hard at all. I mean, Phyllis and I sat down and she she sent me over you know uh, an idea of what what she thought it should be and I I think we moved like two or three songs and that was it. I mean it wasn't much at all. It really kind of and it was really just switching like a two and a, a two and a three or something like that. It wasn't even <laughs> right. It wasn't even hard at all. It was very easy. Right. Was there any thoughts of bringing in any kind of guests in to help out? Initially, um, I did have some some guests in mind. Um, I did talk to her about that. Um, uh, you know, if if Mike wasn't available originally, we were going to have uh, my, my bass player Dino Fiorenza from uh-huh. Italy. He's fabulous. But uh, I, we did talk about having some guest guitar players. Uh, there was going to be a, a uh, that possibility, but you know, with the time constraints, of trying to get the thing done as quickly as possible, um, because I, I wanted it. It was already kind of sitting for a while, right? Uh, the songs that she had, and I really wanted to get it done as fast as possible. Not only for her, but just for the fact that um, I wanted to have something as, as soon as possible. Once Reflection came out, because I, I wanted to have my next release, they didn't know how long it was going to take to do the promotion and, and of course the business side of all that. So, right. Um, so that's why, with the time constraints, I wasn't able to really kind of line up anybody. But the next album, there might be uh, a couple of guests. I've I've, uh, I've I've thrown some some ideas her way. We've talked about a couple of possibilities, and there is going to be a next record, no doubt about it. There's always a second one. I don't care who you are. Right. <laughs> There's always a second one. And uh, yeah, so there's going to be somebody. I, um, I have a couple guys in mind. Uh, I'm not sure yet because I got I got to reach out and just kind of fish and see what their schedule is like, but I'd like to get a couple guys on there if I could. Um, guitar players, especially. Right. Now, now, how difficult is it, to, you know, for Enomia um, to actually you know, make an impact in music? How, 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 I know internet's a great tool, but I mean, like, I know word of mouth is a great tool, too, but I mean, with, with the amount of music that's out there, how do you get known? Yeah, man, it's, it's a it's a sea of music out there yeah. right now. And it's, there's, I'm sure, you know, you get a lot of bands and, and stuff coming across your email list. And, um, I think right now, you know, uh, me, we are a new band. I mean, right. we, you know, there's no doubt about it. You know, we are trying to establish ourselves like lots of new bands have done in the last say, five or 10 years or even now. 
Um, the thing about Anomia, you, you know, like you said, word of mouth in the internet, we've, we've, I don't want to say we've caught a little bit of a fire, but we've gotten really lucky in the last couple of weeks uh, since the records come out. Right. Um, but we've been steamrolling a little bit. People have been really kind of receptive to what we were doing. In the beginning, I, I, I thought it was going to, um, I didn't think it was going to tank, but I was like, I was getting a little worried because we had a, a couple of uh, people who didn't really know where we were coming from and didn't understand uh, the style of music. Right. Um, because because of the vocals, and I think that was kind of a, a big part of it. Um, you know, we, we we sound a little different than some of the other symphonic metal bands. Right. Uh, you know, we have a little little, little bit of melodic rock crossover as well. Right. So, but I, I think the word of mouth thing has really really picked up for us, and also um, the internet. It has. Uh, you know, I. I Aside from that, right now, you know, we're, we're going to have to try to get something going with the live shows. Uh, I do believe that uh, that's also going to be key, that we get picked up on some type of, uh, you know, billing with, with another band. A um, couple bands I'd like to do some stuff with, maybe like Iced Earth or Skeleton Witch or, you know, somebody like that, you know, uh, for example. Uh, those, those type of uh, grassroots, you know, uh, shows or working with those type of bands would fit kind of what we were doing. Um, you know, I'm not afraid to do melodic rock fest too. That would also be uh, beneficial. And I think that's where it's going to be for us. I think uh, the band's going to have to get out there and play. And I think that's what's going to—that's the next step for us in order to get where we need to go. And, and we have the product. Obviously, we have the songs. Uh, if you're, you know, if you're passionate about this type of music, which we are, um, you know, we do believe we have the material to do it. We just need to to get on some billings and make that happen. And I think that's the, really the key for us. Right. Uh, do you think it'll be difficult at all uh, trying to portray the songs on the album live? Um, no, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't feel like it would be at all. Right. I don't. Um, I think you know we'll definitely have the same lineup live. It's like I said, it's a band. Um, right. You know, so you know it's possible. I mean, there's a possibility we may have a second guitar player depending on uh, what's needed. I mean, I'm, I'm not. Uh, I'm not opposed to that at all. Actually, right. uh, I think it's great. I think it's a great idea. Um, if it if it comes to that, uh, you know, but I don't think I don't think we'll have a problem at all portraying or or, or delivering uh, what we need. Cool. Um, so. Cool. Was everything done in house? Uh, you, you know, self financed everything else. Everything was done in house, one hundred percent. The the uh, the recording, you know, uh, all the recordings. Uh, and engineering was done in house. The mixing and mastering was not done in house. Uh-huh. Uh, it was done. It was done. It was outsourced, if you will, and right. that's that's cur- courtesy of Pure Steel Records. Uh huh. Cool, cool, cool. Now, with the live show, uh, will you do um, you know the whole United States, or are you just going to concentrate on different parts? Well, I think uh, you know, I, I'd like. Well, of course, I'd love to do the whole United States if we could. I mean, yeah. if, we could, if, we could fill, if we could fill. Listen, man, if we could fill, you know. You know, whatever stuff comes our way, we do it. I mean, I know for a fact Phyllis is ready to get 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 on the bus and go. Right. Um, it's just a, just a matter of of being able to book it. Uh, but you know, whether it's Rock Home or whatever it is, you know, the band would be more than happy to do it. You know, and right. I know that. Um, and we do definitely want to do. We definitely want to go overseas. Um, you know, our label's based out of Germany. Right. Um, you know, I've I've got some. You know. Uh, I got some good friends over, you know, in Europe, and I'd love to, I would love to go over there and and, uh, and show the love, you know. Right. Yeah. You think you you'd uh, make a bigger impact in Europe than the United States? Um, you know, the United States is tough. Probably, you know. Yeah, probably, but most likely, yes. I mean, it's it, I would be, it'd be foolish of me to think otherwise. I think right now, you know, the United States does have its its um its market, but uh, you know, it's. It's. I think it's definitely split. Uh, you know, the the metal scene is very divided. And when I say that, I don't mean that as far as people. I just mean there's a lot of subgenres, and not everybody likes everything that, that's coming out. You know, right. and not a you know, guy who likes Doc and may not necessarily like Doc, and he might like you know Godsmack and me may right. you know, that sort of thing. So, um, you know, I, I've met plenty of people who like Godsmack who don't like Adrenaline Mob. You know, and I, right, I yeah. find that kind of weird. <laughs> I find that weird, but <laughs> to me, I I love Adrenaline Mob. I think you know, I think the band's great. So I, I don't know. It's, it's, one of those things where you you run into the to, to these little lines drawn in the sand, so to speak. So I think I think the United States is a little more uh, uh, critical of, 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 of the sound, and it does make it a lot more difficult to, to get some kind of traction. Right. Um, you know, um, I do think that uh, the European bands, uh, European uh, sorry, scene is a little uh, accepting in some ways. So right, right. Um, Maybe may a little more uh, easier for us, if you will, at the beginning, anyway. 
Right. Uh, uh, how's the rapport with Phyllis and you? And, uh, um, you know, I guess this is this the first time you have a female uh, lead vocalist uh, singing for you guys? Not, Any, anything? Well, not for me. I mean, currently, uh, actually, my entire career, <laughs> uh-huh. believe it or not, my entire career has been uh, working with female artists. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, I worked with a female artist named Terry Lane for many, many years. Right. Yes. Uh, uh, you know, and uh, she's actually one of my best friends. Um, Phyllis is, you know, I don't know if they're at the bottom of the list, but she's definitely, you know, when I say bottom, I just mean as far as the, the amount of people. Not, right, yeah. Not in any particular, no particular order. Yeah. But she's, she's amongst one of the ones that, you know, currently, I should say. I work with Christine Ullman from, uh, Rebel, and Rebel Montez from Saturday Night Live. She's the lead vocalist for Saturday cool. Night Live. Wow. Um, you know, I, um, let's see, who else have I worked with as female? So, Burke's daughter, I've worked with a few other uh, female artists. Like, my, my, my mind is going a blank right now. But yeah, predominantly female artists is who I've worked with over my entire course of my career. And, um, some people, you know, like that. Some people don't. I like working with female artists. I think, uh, they have a unique perspective as far as how uh, songs go and, and, and things are written and, uh, you know. Cool. It, work, it kind of works, you know, and uh, I don't know how else to describe it. I mean, I like working with, with guys, too, man. I, You know, uh, Becerra and Kelly Keeling and Chandler, of course, you know, and those guys are freaking great to work with, you know. Cool, cool, cool. Well, Chris, it was great talking to you, and congratulations on Enomia. And, um, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, that CD takes off. I know I love it, so, uh, you know, I'll try to push it on my end. And, uh, you know, I wish you the best. Would you like to say anything to the fans in the ending? Man, you guys out there are awesome. You know, we we love every one of you that, that you know, especially the guys out there that are and, and girls that are buying records and supporting all the bands. You know, um, you know, we appreciate that. I know it, it comes from the bottom of my heart. And uh, just uh, anytime you can, man, get out there and, and check out some live music and and rock it. Cool. And where can uh, people uh, pick up the album? Well, believe it or not, it's it's we have worldwide distribution. So we got Walmart dot com, Best Buy dot com, uh, Target dot com. Uh, you can go to Pure Steel Records cool. uh, website if you like. If, if you're overseas, uh, we have uh, Soul Food actually distributes our album, so we're, we're all over the internet, everywhere. You type in Anomia Break Free, and it'll come up first thing on your uh, on your browser. Cool. And people could check you out on your Facebook page. Absolutely, uh, you can check me out on my Facebook page. I also have ChrisBickley.com, uh, Anomia, uh, AnomiaBand.com, also E Y N. Uh, O M I A dot com. I had to think about it from that. Band dot com. Uh, yeah, we're on Facebook, Twitter. You know, we we have all the social media stuff here and up and, and on there. We also have uh, there's a trailer on YouTube as well. If you if you want to check out the record if you haven't heard it before, um, that's also on there as well. Cool. Um, so cool. Thanks a lot, Chris. I appreciate. The talk. Hey, man. Thanks. Hey, thanks for having me, brother. And no problem. Talk to you later. See you. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.